Loki episode two left us on a wild cliffhanger, which might have actually been the birth of the multiverse. Wow. BD here with your reaction, spoiler-filled, breakdown, ending, explained video for Loki episode two. I'll share my thoughts and reaction review at the end of the episode. We'll do the breakdown first and also show how this might explain when the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer is coming. Dun dun dun! To properly cover this episode, I think we need to start at the end with that cliffhanger, what it all means, and how the multiverse is just exploding wide open right before our eyes. The big reveal at the end of the episode. The hood comes off. It's Lady Loki. Wow! Wow. But is it actually Lady Loki? Hold on, let me explain. We all kind of knew Sofia Martino was going to play this Lady Loki part, yet the reveal was very surprising. It's probably a version of Loki that's been in this body for a long time, assuming it is a Loki, and it started who knows when in the timeline. But it also confirms that shot that a lot of people, myself included, thought could be Black Widow on Vormir is actually Lady Loki in another apocalypse. Is there a chance, though, that this is actually Enchantress from comics. Because honestly, she is wearing Loki's costume, but she doesn't really look too much like Lady Loki from comics. Actually, kind of looks like Enchantress from comics. That said, she does have a one broken horn like Loki in Agent of Asgard, so a nice nod there. I think this could end up being like an amalgamation type thing where we get parts of Lady Loki stories, parts of Enchantress stories and powers and all those things kind of combine into one for the sake of this Loki show. Loki, by the way, is gender fluid. It's confirmed for the MCU in a TVA file and a promo shot. Lady Loki is one of many comic forms of Loki, including Kid Loki and others. They're all Loki. Loki is not defined by gender in comics or in the Norse mythology, which has inspired this character. So that's a fun fact for you. Wow. Whoever this person turns out to be, they, they have just shown us the birth of the multiverse. Reset charges are sent to a bunch of times and places creating a Nexus event and resulting in madness, surely. Now the first thought of this is this is set up for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. There's been no multiverse stories yet, only multiverse baiting like Mysterio, the liar, from Spider-Man Far From Home. This seems to really kick off the multiverse and create a bunch of new timelines and realities and while most of the charges were sent to Earth, because of course we are the center of the universe, the screen shows a lot of very interesting destinations. Like we see a charge is sent to Vormir and to Asgard in 2004 before the events of Thor, Sakaar in 1904, long before the events of Thor Ragnarok, Ego the Living Planet, Star-Lord's dad. One is sent to Titan in 1982, that planet was doomed from the start. And another was sent to Hala in the year 51, the homeworld of the Kree. But now that we have the multiverse blown wide open, I think we might be able to see the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer in just a couple of weeks. Oh, how does Loki have anything to do with a trailer for Spider-Man Far From Home, you ask? Well, let me tell you. I talked to Loki himself, Tom Hiddleston, and he told me episode four and five is where things get really crazy, which leaves July 1st, a Thursday, as the perfect time to release the Spidey trailer with multiverse elements involved if Loki has to show them to the world first. Am I reaching? Am I reaching? I might be reaching. Wow. We saw Loki's using three new powers in this episode we haven't seen before in the MCU. A transfer or extension of consciousness, drying himself off, and basically telekinetically grabbing a weapon. Director Kate Heron was particularly excited for all of these. I think for me, like, I was really excited to get to show more of his magic in the show because, you know, he, I think it's like 79 minutes maybe across all the MCU films and obviously within two hours, like, and, and there's a lot going on all the, in, in all the films he's in, you can only show so much. And I thought, well, if we have six hours, we should be, you know, let's push it more and let's see what else he can do. Now let's go back to Renslayer. Three things I want to talk about and theorize here. Number one, her trophy case. Mobius' wins go there, and I think we're gonna have a heartbreaking moment where Mobius realized he is one of many Mobiuses, just aimlessly working for the TVA with no real reward. Number two, I think Kang the Conqueror is the Timekeepers. The Timekeepers exist in comics, but I think there's a chance Kang will actually be the one pulling the strings in the TVA for the MCU, trying to maintain his dominance over the timeline and eventually losing it. And number three, if I don't see Mobius riding a jet ski before this is all over, I will absolutely riot. Wow. A couple other Easter eggs before we wrap up. Loki arrives in Pompeii and says to everyone, I bring you all dark tidings, which is a play on his words in the Avengers where he said, I come with glad tidings. Also, if I really want to try to find Easter eggs, I would say that the alien logo for one of the items advertised in the Roxcart store 
actually resembles an old school Spider-Man logo you used to find on comics. Oh man, I feel like, wow. And finally, Rock's Cart being the grocery store is a nod to the Roxxon Corporation, well known for Marvel Comics, but also very present in the Marvel TV shows like Daredevil and Charlie Cox is primed to reprise his role on more than one occasion for Marvel Studios, so this could be a sign of the Netflix shows being acknowledged by Marvel Studios and the MCU. Now I'm gonna weigh in on the episode. I thought it was brilliant. I think episode two was better than episode Episode one, huge fan of Owen Wilson, Tom Hiddleston, you know he's great. Natalie Holt though, shout out to Natalie Holt. If you haven't heard that name, she is the composer of the music that you're hearing and it is making the show so good. The pacing is great, the cliffhanger was wonderful. I feel like this was truly the first act of Loki coming to an end, which means episode three and four could be act two and episodes five and six could be the climactic third and final act of this long movie cut into a series and I'm loving it so far. What Easter eggs and references did you catch in Loki episode two? Drop them in the comment section or send them my way on Instagram at Brandon Davis BD. And go ahead and write Loki three times fast in the comment section to let us know you made it to the end of the video. I'll hit you thumbs up. Subscribe to comicbook.com's YouTube channel for more videos like this one and head over to comicbook.com slash Marvel for more updates right now and join me on the MCU podcast, Phase Zero, for extended chats. I'm BD, I'll see you there.